yet another episode. <laughs> How's it going everyone? Hopefully you guys are doing well and welcome to yet another episode of Get Set Go. It's not obvious, I'm on a short little hike before actually shooting the video you guys are here to watch. And the reason I'm shooting this preview is just to tell you guys, first off, to have a seat. The reason I made this preview to say that is because before you like this video, before you decide to dislike this video or comment down below, I just want to tell you that I'm specifically talking about the third generation Prius as well as the Lexus CT200H. And for those of you guys already wondering, why the Lexus CT200H? Well, the Lexus CT200H is essentially a Prius in Wolves Closing. It shares the same engine, transaxle, hybrid battery, just about everything besides how the Lexus CT200H looks. Okay, so again, that's it. Let's shoot the video and I'll see you guys on the other side. <laughs> you guys notice I'm working out lately? No? Okay. Oh, hey, Denise either. Maybe you're here just to stop by to see what's all the design flaws that Toyota has made on the Lexus CT200H and the third generation Prius. Of course, you come to the right place. Now, the very first design flaw we're gonna talk about is what's under this hood. That's the 1ZR engine. Now, the 1ZR engine was a completely new design for Toyota. They even included a brand new cooling system just for the engine. Now, an electric cooling pump, that sounds cool, right? An electric cooling pump, yeah. However, this became a problem because of the plastic impeller. People are noticing issues between 90,000 and 120,000 miles. And of course, that leads to many different problems. But before I get to those problems, this electric pump replaced a lot of the older belt-driven water pumps, not only that you see in like some of the gasoline engines running by, but also the older Toyota models. By the way, guys, I'm like drenching in sweat. Like, I'm losing my mind here. Can you guys give me a like? Can you guys throw me a comment? I'm like, <laughs> I'm soaking. So what happens when the electric water pump impeller goes bad, again, it's a plastic piece, is that it decreases the flow of coolant drastically, almost significantly, which leads the engine not being cooled enough because again, it's not getting enough of its coolant supply, which leads to the engine overheating, which again, leads to all those head gasket failures that I believe is going on. So what, do you guys hear that? I heard class action lawsuit. Now, this problem also leads into the next problem, and that's that the hybrids don't have an engine temperature gauge. Now, what you see in some of the other gasoline engines is that it has its own temperature gauge, just so you know how hot the engine is running. Now, if I didn't take this car to my mechanic, I would not have found out that, again, my engine was running really hot. And what I needed to replace was a temperature sensor. And that's something you guys should really consider as well. The only way to really find out how hot your, your engine is running with the hybrid is to plug a very expensive OBD and then find out what the coolant temperature is running at. Now, what my friend told me again, the mechanic, he said that my engine was running very hot and the fans weren't kicking in. And of course, I had no idea of knowing a friend said that my engine was running typically around this range right here. I replaced the engine last year. I recently did the coolant pump, I did the fuel pump, and I also did that temperature sensor that I told you guys about earlier, okay? It's very important that you guys not only find out what temperature your engine is running, uh, but to also replace that temperature sensor because if that temperature sensor doesn't sense the coolant running too hot, and it's not gonna kick in the fans, which essentially leads to your engine overheating. So again, find out what temperature your engine is running at, leave that to your mechanic to find out, and then um, take the necessary steps. Personally, it's a cheap part, it's easy to get to, replace it right now if you guys can. And really the other tip I have for those of you that hit that B section, um, again, that's that B where it's like neutral, reverse, you know, drive, and you have that section that goes all the way down, which is B. Um, anyways, if you're constantly on that B section, what that does mechanically is that it mimics a misfire. And what that essentially means is that you would have to go through spark plugs more often. So again, if you want to be in that B gear uh, quite often, I suggest again, replacing the spark plugs. And that pretty much concludes this entire video. I'm so glad that you guys stuck all the way through and I don't want you guys just to like this or dislike this and bounce. I'm really trying to build a community here and it's not for me, it's mainly for you guys. So, 
So take a couple minutes, go down. What did you like? Um, are you guys interested in this car? Do you guys already have this car? And have you guys ran into some of the issues that I, somebody, somebody keeps saying class action lawsuit, guys. I don't, I don't know. Maybe we can organize that down here. Okay, guys, take care.